Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be continuing the series Through the Ages, where we look at how the different Ewe2 civilizations have changed over time. We're going to be focusing here on what was arguably the most radical introduction of civilizations in the game's history, which is of course the Conqueror's expansion first introducing the Aztecs and Mayans. By the time they were introduced, Age of Kings had been out for just shy of a year, and following the recent success of the Rise of Rome expansion for AoE 1, Microsoft wanted an expansion for AoE 2, giving the reins to the legendary game designer Sandy Peterson. Luckily for us, Peterson gave a lot of interviews at the time, providing us the lead developer's insights about what they were thinking about as they made these two radical and very popular civilizations. Of course, what made them so radical is they couldn't build the stable for historical reasons, and yet the core of the game was balanced with access to that building in mind. There were also a number of historical concerns, with texts like chemistry, plate armor, and units like trebuchets and galleys, etc., maybe feeling inauthentic for an American civilization to use during the time period. Sandy Peterson actually had a great answer to this. In response to one question asking why Mayans and Aztecs get armor upgrades despite inferior armor to Spanish and Europeans, he points out that even the Spanish stopped using metal armor in the Mesoamerican climate for various practical reasons, and that Aztecs did have access to iron. If they had been fighting in a climate where iron would have been more practical to use, then they very likely would have switched to iron weapons in response. Concerns about Aztec and Mayan navies were also raised as well, and he pointed out there were instances of naval battles, at least on lakes, and then pointed out that Aztecs and Mayans made just as many trebuchets as the Goths and Japanese. In fact, the petard is probably the only hand waving he gives, saying there may be a stand in for a non gunpowder saboteur, and it's really the only case where he essentially says, just use your imagination, kid. From all of this, you can see just the idea of bringing in American civilizations at least raised some questions at the time, though judging by the answers, it seems they had put some thought into that. One point Sandy Peterson makes that should resonate with anyone who has played the Aztecs and Mayans is their strong economy. As Peterson points out, there's wide agreement they were equal or superior to European civilizations by some economic measure, such as city size, with Tenochtitlan at its peak estimated to be similar or larger than the largest European cities like Paris, Venice, or Constantinople at the time. Of course, in-game, the Aztec and Mayan economies have always largely defined them, and that doesn't seem to have been an accident. With questions of whether American civs belong in the game or not addressed, the next question was how to make the two distinct from each other given their geographical and technological similarity. Here, Sandy Peterson is very adamant they wanted to make them two of the most different civilizations in the game to play, and that Incas were out as a possibility, as their architecture was too different. He says multiple times in interviews that the Incas could not use the same architectural style, citing the only similarities he saw between Chichen Itza and Machu Picchu is that they're both made of stone. As a side note here, obviously Forgotten Empire Studio didn't agree that was an issue, and of course just gave the Mesoamerican style to the Incas a decade later. Coming back to the question of cavalry though, there was still the problem of how to offset missing one of the three major military buildings. Cavalry in Age of Empires 2, as in history, plays several different roles, including being at times anti-archer, anti-siege, anti-monk in the case of light cavalry, while also having enough speed to be good at scouting and raiding. Right away, of course, the Eagle Warrior is at least superficially the American stand-in for a lot of those roles, helped out in the case of siege with a direct bonus that cavalry doesn't have. It's easy to imagine the temptation to just make the Eagle Warriors basically a reskin of cavalry with similar speed, cost, and stats, maybe even taking bonus damage from spears to keep things consistent. But in the end, they really did make eagles distinct in a creative way. They of course also had to replace the starting scout, yet it had to be a unit trainable in Castle Age, meaning they basically had to work in a hidden upgrade in terms of stat buffs in Castle, which was made more official down the road as separate units with the introduction of the Eagle Scout. Personally, I always found it interesting that they didn't do that at the beginning, considering the Scout Cavalry line has three versions already, and it would have made for a pretty natural parallel. At this point though, with the general features and design elements out of the way, let's take a look at the evolution of the two civs individually, starting with the Aztecs, who of course picked up the identity as the Infantry and Monk Civ. At release in 2000, their bonuses were basically the same as today on a surface level, though many details have changed quite a bit since then. Originally, their villagers had plus 5 carry capacity, they had plus 15% military production speed, their monk HP bonus, and free loom, which was added in an early patch, effectively putting you up one villager by feudal age. 
the carry capacity bonus had the side effect of making them especially good at farming in the early game given all the walking that farmers do, which may or may not have really been intended. Jaguar Warriors were also considerably weaker with an original Zero Pierce armor, 50 HP for non-elite, dealing plus 10 versus infantry, and having a 20 second training time. All of those aspects would be improved later, and it was arguably quite an underpowered unique unit to begin with, as even after tons of improvements to it directly and to infantry generally, it's still a completely anti-infantry specialist. Now, from the start, largely thanks to their great early economy and farming, Aztecs were widely seen as a very competitive Sith, having perhaps the strongest Dark Age in the game, with Eagles also widely recognized as a very strong unit. Probably one of the most important opinions on the topic though was Sissions, as he would go on to be the lead designer of Forgotten Empire Studios and have a big voice in balance over the last decade. On a website he'd created before that time, his opinion was Aztecs had one of the strongest economies in the game, so it's maybe not surprising that later expansion balance changes would focus mostly on reigning in that aspect of the Sith. For example, in 2013's Forgotten expansion, the Aztec's free loom was replaced with plus 50 gold, retaining some of the bonus and referencing the Aztec's vast wealth of gold, but now you had to spend the research time and no longer indirectly received a free villager by feudal. This is also when the Eagle Scout was introduced to better match the Scout Cavalry line, and Castle Age Eagle Warriors were given an extra Pierce armor, 5 more HP, and a bit more bonus against mounted units. The consensus prior to this was that Eagle Warriors weren't very good until Imperial Age, and this may have been a way to try to make them slightly more popular in at least the mid-game. This is also when the Castle Age unique tech at Lado was introduced, giving a stat boost to skirmishers. Funny enough, Sandy Peterson had actually suggested that they probably should have done something similar, citing that technology specifically as justification for a skirmisher bonus. The Forgotten expansion also saw Jaguar Warriors improved in a couple of ways, though I have to say they still remained a very niche unit and one you don't see very often except maybe against some infantry civs. Following all of this, the perception was Aztecs were still very strong. For example, YouTuber Zero Empires put Aztecs at number 5 in his best civs list in 2014. A couple of years later in the African Kingdoms DLC, Aztecs had the demo raft and demo ship added, going back slightly on the no gunpowder philosophy. Again, I think a little imagination in this case is needed, and maybe they're just saboteurs on the water. The African Kingdom expansion also saw the Eagle Scout become a trainable unit in Feudal Age, though trained in 60 seconds instead of 32 in Castle. The point was pretty obviously to give you the option of replacing a lost early scout, rather than to encourage full-on Eagle Scout rushes. It was around this time, or slightly later, that win rates were starting to be tracked and became publicly available, and in 2019 for example, Aztecs were number 6 overall by win rate in ranked games, though if anything their reputation in tournaments was even higher. There was almost no question whether or not they were a strong sieve, and it was just debated if they were top 5 or not. That was going to change though, as after years of dominance, Aztecs ended up being one of the biggest losers in a round of quick patches that came out shortly after Definitive Edition dropped. With 2019's Definitive Edition, the first big change is the Eagle Scout lost one line of sight in Dark Age. That meant their scouts, which were already slower than Scout Cavalry, no longer had quite the same level of scouting advantage from Greater Line of Sight. That nerf was partly offset by free tracking for all infantry in Feudal Age, but as we all know, Dark Age scouting information is incredibly important. They then received a one-two punch of a couple of nerfs, the first of which being their military unit creation speed boost dropped from plus 18% to plus 11% faster. The weird numbers, by the way, are because they're implemented as minus 15% and minus 10% training times, and you can pick your preferred way of thinking about it. The other major nerf was their villagers carry bonus, went from plus 5 to only plus 3 resources. This hurt especially for their early farming, and remember that had long been something identified as making them so dangerous. The only compensation was an improvement to the Jaguar Warriors creation time being dropped from 20 to 12 seconds, though it's still not an incredibly common unit to see. Overall, the clear pattern has been to consistently try to slow Aztecs down and give other civilizations a chance to breathe in the early game against them. By online win rate stats, they're currently placed at about average, usually scoring around 20th out of the 43 civilizations on open maps, which might be surprising given their still pretty good reputation. But when you think about all of the nerfs they've had, it's maybe not that crazy they've settled as a basically well-balanced Civ at this point. They can still play crossbows just fine and have dangerous late game eagle warriors, though I think it's fair to say they're not the top tier powerhouse that they were in the past. In fact, if you're relatively new to the game, you may not even know that at one point they were widely considered a top 3 Civ, along with Huns and Mayans. 
But speaking of which, let's take a look at the other American civilization introduced in the Conquerors. Where the Aztecs cornered the market on infantry, it made sense to naturally have the other focus on archers, which is what we get with the Mayans. Their original bonuses were likewise quite similar to how they look today, though again a number of changes have happened behind the scenes. One was a weird quirk that's always existed for the Mayans and their farmers. Where Aztecs had surprisingly good farmers from greater carry capacity, Mayan farmers from the start worked 2-5% slower than other civilizations due to how the farming mechanic interacts with their longer lasting resource bonus. The funny thing is they still ended up being so strong that the unintended farming nerf passed unnoticed for a very long time. The first mention of it I found is from 2013, so it seems players spent 13 years without noticing this. We're talking about millions if not billions of food being unaccounted for during the zone days of AoE 2, though it may have helped that their archer focus meant they were often more reliant on wood and gold than food specifically. Their standout unit has always been the plumed archer, combining speed, high HP, high pierce armor, and a cheap cost, made even cheaper by the Mayans archer discount. Sandy Peterson's early comments on the plumed archer are actually a bit perplexing, as he suggests the way their HP, armor, and attack work, they're basically good against archers and especially bad against other units. There may have been some last minute changes to the unit, but on release it was objectively superior to the crossbow in HP, armor, speed, and equal in attack, though reloaded faster than crossbows. Of course, crossbows have one more range and cost less, so there's certainly a trade-off, but contrary to the developer's expectations it seems, plumed archers quickly gained a reputation as one of the best unique units in the game, to the point they've since been nerfed twice. As I said, Mayans were almost immediately considered a top-tier civilization, and usually top three, along with Aztecs and Huns, for over a decade. Many of the positive things players said about the Aztecs economy and Eagle Warriors applied just as well to the Mayans, though Mayans threw in a great archer unique unit with a lot of mobility on top of that. Keeping all this in mind, the forgotten expansion surprisingly made Mayans arguably even stronger. Of course the Eagle Scout was added as a separate unit, and a set of improvements for the Eagle Warrior applied to the Mayans, making them a bit better in Castle Age. This is also when their infamous Obsidian Arrows tech was introduced, which gave their archer line plus 4 attack against buildings, addressing the mine's limited infantry and siege options. Given that tech didn't apply to plumed archers, it suddenly made their discounted crossbow line much more intriguing, helped even more by a slight increase to the base cost of the plumed archer as well. With African Kingdoms in 2015, they were hit with their first real nerf, having their longer lasting resources bonus fall from plus 20% to plus 15, which is what it is now. Surprisingly, Obsidian Arrows was improved drastically from plus 4 to plus 6 against buildings and another plus 6 against some specific defensive buildings like gates, walls, and towers. This put Obsidian Arrows into at least situationally overpowered territory, though it was undoubtedly a very fun tech to use and it was sad but inevitable when a cheap plus 12 attack against gates for your crossbow line was eventually removed. This is around the first time we started to see public win rate stats, and Mines came in at number 7 in ranked games, basically neck and neck with Aztecs. If anything, based on the reputation, I think many players personally would have ranked them even higher. In Definitive Edition, Mines were again targeted, with first their plumed archer's base cost raising from 50 wood and gold to 55, now 20% more expensive than they were in Age of Conquerors. Their extra villager now also appeared after a town center was constructed, making them much weaker on Nomad, which had previously been a very good map for them, as they started with 4 villagers letting you make your town center faster. Temporarily, they were also given the new tech supplies, but that was quickly taken away, maybe to emphasize Mayans are not an infantry sieve, and differentiate them from Aztecs and Incas to a degree. Leaving Mayans as one of only a handful of civs that don't get this tech feels in line with the original concerns of the Age of Conquerors team and their intention to make Aztecs and Mayans feel quite different. In fairness, Mayans don't really need infantry aside from eagles, which especially after El Dorado are in almost all cases the best eagles in the game. Later on, Obsidian Arrows was also at first weakened against stone defenses and then just removed entirely, much to the sadness of meme players everywhere. It was instead replaced with Hulche Javelineers for their skirmishers, solidifying a pattern for all three American civs to have some help for that unit. I suspect this was motivated for thematic reasons, emphasizing the kinds of weapons they'd have used historically, but probably also comes back to the idea of offsetting the lack of cavalry as an option against archers. Currently by win rate, Mayans have held up much better than Aztecs through their nerfs, usually still hovering around the 7th best civilization or thereabouts depending on the patch, but clearly still a top civilization. 
On open maps, they're played roughly twice as often as Aztecs, so despite being neck and neck for a long time, Mayans appear to have emerged as the better Civ of the two in 1v1 games, and indisputably better in team games. In fact, Mayans are the best performing archer Civ in team games, period. Aztecs, in contrast, are often around the bottom five these days, as an infantry focus typically doesn't translate well within the knight and crossbow meta that often dominates team game compositions. So to wrap up, I have to commend Sandy Peterson and Ensemble Studios for their ambition and creativity in fitting American civilizations within a game that was really not intended originally with them in mind. It's obvious from interviews they thought hard about how to bring them in and make the lack of cavalry an interesting problem to work around, instead of just giving a reskinned eagle that did the exact same thing as cavalry anyway. Both Mesoamerican civilizations have remained relatively popular and yet distinct civilizations, with surprisingly little in common besides eagle warriors and good economies. That'll do it for this one though. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you next time.